Hey guys, welcome to the channel. It's Jack with Stronghold Strength and Conditioning. And today, we're gonna be answering the question, do I have a weak core? But before we get into it, make sure you take a moment and hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Thursday, I'm putting out videos showing you how to resolve the aches and pains, prevent the injuries, and overall optimize your performance inside the gym and outside of it in your daily life and routine. And it doesn't get much better than that, so take advantage of it. Ready? Let's go ahead and get into this one. Alright guys, so today we're answering one of the most important questions that you could possibly be asking yourself when it comes to improving your overall mobility and strength, and that is, do I have a weak core? If we're weak at the core, if we can't organize that spinal column and stabilize that spinal column well, we are automatically putting ourselves at risk and our body will automatically be locking up range of motion and flexibility that we feel we should have in order to protect itself at one of the most important areas and that is our central nervous system. So today we're gonna be identifying where that weakness is by looking at three different positionings to test yourself on your core stability overall. Do I have strength in the sagittal plane? Do I have strength and stability in the frontal plane? And do I have strength and stability in the transverse plane? We're also gonna be talking about one more key component that underlies all three of those planes. And it's honestly one of the easiest ways to tell if I'm missing out on core stability that is there to be had and chances are you're doing it and you're guilty of being weak in the core in this way so let's go ahead and get into this without further ado and here we go all right guys the very first place that we want to check to see if you are weak in the core is can you guess it our breath if we're not checking our breath, if we're not able to diaphragmatically breathe well, then we're automatically weakening ourselves at the core. Now, if you're already turned off, hear me out a second. When we don't know how to breathe well, we tend to use our secondary musculature, with, which happens to be more around the chest and the neck here, which technically is still part of our core, but we're eliminating one very key factor and that would be called our diaphragm. It's one of the biggest muscles that we have in our torso, honestly, and it is designed specifically for our breath. Secondary musculature, such as the sternocleomastoid, the levator scapula, the pec, pec minor, those types of muscles are surrounding the rib cage as well and can create a faux breathing but they don't actually help support the spinal column through intra-abdominal pressure. And that is a huge key right there. If I don't know how to appropriately use intra-abdominal pressure when I'm exercising or when I'm exerting myself in a physical activity or a uh, you know, your piece of yard work, lifting something in the house, whatever it might be, if I'm breathing incorrectly, I'm missing out on one of the biggest things I could be using to help stabilize my core from the inside out. So the very first thing we need to restore is diaphragmatic breathing making sure that I'm able to fully fill that abdominal cavern, such as that, maybe you've heard the pop can analogy. It's hard to crush a pop can that's full and has that pressure inside. That is similar to the intra-abdominal pressure that we want to be able to create when we're lifting a weight or when we're lifting an object around the house or moving an object in that way. It creates stability for the spinal column from the inside out and we have that internal pressure to support it. Even when I'm exhaling my air, so taking that deep breath in fills that cavern, but even when I'm exhaling, I still need to be using that belly breathing technique to ensure that I never let go of tension and support around the spinal column in, in that abdominal area. That is one of the biggest things that you could do to start to build core stability and to check even if you have weakness in the core in that way. So if you're not using your breath correctly, you're automatically weakening your core. Simply put, right there. So start with breathing. 
diaphragmatic breathing, completely nasal breathing if you can. One of the easiest ways I was always able to tell if clients had control over a movement was their breath. The moment they were unable to control their breath, they started to use the secondary musculature around the chest, the neck, upper, away from the core itself and away from the center itself. The people who had better control over whatever movement it was that I was giving them were able to breathe diaphragmatically still and control their breath. The breathing rate did not go up. They maintained the level breathing weight rate and they were steady even as exertion was going up. Obviously, we all reach a point where our exertion level is gonna exceed what we're able to do, but the goal is to push that boundary further and further down the line, making sure that we're able to maintain that breath longer through the exercise bout and stabilize the core longer through the exercise bout. If you're losing your breath and you're losing that core stability, that's probably a good sign that you should cut off there and come back in for another set at that point because now we're starting to exert ourselves beyond what we're stable and we're putting ourselves at further risk for injury. So, something to think about there, one of the easiest places to look at your breath. Okay, now that I threw you for a loop on that one, let's get into the actual movements themselves and or the tests themselves for you here so that you can look at where you're weak, which plane you're weak in, and how you might go about fixing or strengthening that, which I'll include a link to my last video that I made on the core that was how to build a strong and stable core right up here so you guys can check out the strengthening stuff itself. Today, it's all about testing and identifying that weakness, but the strengthening portion, right up there. So go ahead and take advantage of that free stuff as well there. But our first test for the sagittal plane, which is most of our front and back movements here. The, the one test that I like to do best is a supine low hold here. And it is a very easy one to do in concept, but it will show you where you're actually weakest and where that chain starts to break down. Now, it might just be connecting all the pieces and relearning how to organize your core and stabilize your core in the first place, which that's okay too, but keep that in the back of your mind. So in the supine low hold, what we wanna do is place ourselves so that we're lying back on our back here. We're gonna organize our shoulder blades first by rolling them down and back and engaging the upper back musculature. And this is gonna put a small arch in my back not excessive, but small enough. It might feel kind of big at first. Once we engage the abs, that's gonna go away. But I roll those shoulder blades down and back. I'm gonna lift my hips, engage the glutes. So now I'm stabilizing my core from the upper portion and the lower portion. And then I'm gonna bridge it with the abdomen here. Now my goal is to be able to hold this posture without anything shifting with the feet hovering just enough off the mat here that literally I could slide a piece of paper under those heels. So I should feel that mat tap every so often and that's how low I wanna hold, okay? Now I'm gonna tell you guys how we're gonna identify where we're weakest right here in the next portion, okay? Because there's a few key signs that'll happen almost immediately and it'll happen in one of those three areas that we set that will show us where that weak link is in that sagittal plane. Now, if my instability is coming from the thoracic spinal column and my scapula, what we'll see is that the chest wants to cave and round. You may even go as far as feeling your head pick up off the floor, depending on how severe that instability is. And that would look something like this. So here's my perfect setup. But as soon as I lift those feet, my head, chest, and back want to do this. And that is our first position of instability. So if the shoulder blades are our weak point, if our thoracic spinal column lacks stability and is unable to extend in this position, I'm going to collapse and cave inward at the chest. The second most common instability that we'll see will come from the hips and pelvis. If I'm unable to actually control the pelvis, then we're gonna see a big anterior pelvic tilt occur. 
and my hip flexion angle will increase, which means I won't have my heels close to the ground anymore. They'll wanna go elevated and I'll likely see my back arch as well quite a bit. So my lumbar spine arches a bunch. My butt is not able to flex the way that it should so I don't have tension in the glutes and my hip flexors become the stabilizers in this position. So if I can get my shoulders into a good position but I don't have my butt stabilizing well and I'm using my hip flexors to stabilize, you see I have a sharper angle here and a bigger arch here. The way that we control our lumbar spine and our lowest portion of our spinal column is two pieces. So the abs work together to connect not only the shoulder positioning all together with the pelvis, but they also work to keep the pelvis in a good angle with the glutes. But the glutes are actually the main driver here. So if I don't have full tension at the glutes, my ability to stabilize the glutes here, tight flex that's why i pick my butt up off the floor flex it as tight as i can and keep that flex now i'm still flexing my butt is firm against the mat here and my butt is going to be stabilizing with my abdomen to keep my pelvis neutral so that i don't go into anterior pelvic tilt and into that arch stabilizing from my hip flexors to keep my legs up so those are the two main faults and instabilities that you'll see in that plane of movement, in that sagittal plane of movement with the supine low hold. This transfers to exercises like the top of a squat, the top of a deadlift, a plank, a push-up. It even transfers into the concept of something like a bench press where the legs are bent underneath us, where we still need the glutes and pelvis to stabilize, even though our leg isn't long. This concept is hugely important for the majority of the exercises that you're gonna do. So if you can't create that pillar of tension through your body in this supine position, that is a huge problem and we need to get that fixed right away. So you can start by working on just this position in general and only holding the quality position, making sure that we're not showing any of those faults, whether it's the caving of the chest or the hip flexion stabilization versus glute stabilization. Those two things, if you don't get them right, it's gonna, it's gonna be a negative effect in the long run with other exercises. So we need to make those a priority and I can't stress that enough. Make sure that you can stabilize in that sagittal plane with good positioning for at least 60 seconds. So you should be able to hold that position for 60 seconds at a time, rest for 30 seconds, come back and do another 60 seconds realistically, three sets in there, or even up to two minutes. So really how long can we hold that position? That's gonna show our core stability overall. Then when we start adding in you know, resistance and tension to that position in those exercises that we're doing, now that'll begin to challenge that more and more, but that concept, that pillar concept in that sagittal plane there is so important. I cannot stress it enough. Learn that one well, guys. All right, core test number two, a full side plank. Here we're looking at the frontal plane, so my ability to stabilize in that frontal plane, and it shows a great amount of shoulder stability here to be able to hold this side plank position. What we're looking at is my ability to keep my shoulder in a position where it's not drooping or getting jammed into my ear and neck there. My elbow is rotating toward my ribs. It takes a look at the subsystem, the lateral subsystem that goes along the downside of my body, the underside of my body there. So here I'm able to look at are my glute, med, and min activating in the way they should? Can I still activate the glutes in full extension in that plane? Because again, even here I can cheat and drop my hips back or I might be sagging. And here you see these faults. So the shoulder fault where it's getting jammed into my ear, I have a, an unstable scapula here. I don't know how to use torque in this position. And the drooping hip, I don't have stability from my glutes stabilizing my pelvis or my obliques here. We interrupt this programming for a brief family moment. It was early morning and my recording got a little bit interrupted here, but it's okay. I was just waiting for a camera to go down. Thankfully, it did not. So we're all good. 
All right, and one more look here at stability in the frontal plane. We have that shoulder stability where I have a good position of the scapula. My shoulder blades are stabilizing the spinal column there with the elbow rotating in toward my ribs. My hips are stable, no sagging in that position, and I'm literally between two panes of glass. Another common mistake you'll see here, or one that shows the shoulder instability, is that the person will wanna rotate toward the floor. So here we actually wanna open up as much as as possible where the shoulder blades are connecting on the upper back in this position. This is hugely important for that lateral stability in our bodies. If we're doing any carries that are offset in general, like a farmer's carry or a briefcase carry, this is the strength that we need to keep our body in good positioning. Even if we're doing unilateral presses, this becomes very important so that I'm not manipulating my body. So these are the types of things that our lateral stability feeds into in this position in the frontal plane. And lastly, looking at the transverse plane. And transverse is rotation. So here we're actually testing anti-rotation. We need the strength and stability to resist rotation first before we train for rotation because oftentimes when we train rotation we can actually train compensations that we hold so here i'm simply holding that band out in front of me in high tension trying to maintain a good structure shoulder blades rolled down and back my glutes engaging so that my back leg the glute is engaged on that side and the hip is firm my pelvis is supported even the front leg opening the knee toward the small toes with my feet planted so it should feel like I should be able to stand up from this position right away here. Now, that is key. Shoulder positioning and hip positioning. If either of those are lacking where I want to go into protraction or flexion of the upper spinal column, such as I show here, or I don't feel my glutes engaging in this position, once again, I'm either relying on my adductors or hip flexors to stabilize instead. And it's important to note, if we look at all three of these tests, it's not like each one is isolated completely. So there's always some work in the sagittal plane. There's always some work in the frontal plane. There's always some work in the transverse plane. And we want to make sure that we're optimizing all three. These just emphasize certain pieces so that we can isolate out where we're weakest and we can form a three-dimensional core that's super strong here. All right, and there you guys have it. Do I have a weak core? First of all, start with your breath. Make sure that we're breathing diaphragmatically and using intra-abdominal pressure effectively in a way that supports the spinal column from the inside out. Second, check the sagittal plane. Then, the frontal plane, and finally the transverse plane there. If you are strong in all three areas plus that breathing technique, then we are good to go and you have a strong core. If you happen to be weak in any of those areas, again, remember, check out do or how to build a strong and stable core. I'll also link that down below in the description so you guys can check that out there if you missed that link up above. So if you guys like this video, make sure to let me know by clicking that big thumbs up down below and take a moment to share this one with a friend. We know this is one of the most important things for our overall mobility our health, our longevity, to make sure that we are not injuring ourselves and constantly coming up with aches and pains from training. It all starts at the core and goes outward from there to make sure that we're effectively using our force well. And if you guys are looking to improve your overall mobility, make sure you take advantage of my seven day mobility training challenge. That's also linked down below in the description here. It's seven days of pre-programmed mobility training that are 15 minute sessions no equipment necessary you could do them right from home pretty much anywhere you want to and they will get you headed in the right direction basically a litmus test for do i have the range of motion i need do i have the flexibility i need and where am i lacking stability and control and it gives you that miniature approach to lead you off from there on what direction you should go with your mobility training to fix all those things Last but not least, if you have not already, make sure you take a moment to hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on future content like this. Every Thursday, I'm putting out videos showing you how to resolve the aches and pains, prevent the injuries, and overall optimize your performance inside the gym and outside of it in your daily life and routine, and it really doesn't get much better than that. Welcome to the Stronghold Army. I'll see you guys next week.